I have for the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. I'll be using this setup from now on. Uh, today we're talking about Jesus Christ, what the hell is that? So yeah, that, that scared me as a kid. So, why don't we change that? Alright everybody, welcome back. This is the new setup I have for the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. I'll be using this setup from now on. Uh, today we're talking about Jesus Christ, what the hell is that? So yeah, that, that scared me as a kid. So, why don't we change that? Much better. So, Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge, or Freddy's Revenge, A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, or just Freddy's Revenge. That's what we're talking about today. So, the thing with this movie is it is known as the most homoerotic Nightmare on Elm Street film, obviously, but one of the most homoerotic horror films. Now, why is that? We're going to delve into some of that with some stuff I watched from Never Sleep Again, the Nightmare on Elm Street documentary. And if you want to know even more about it, I highly recommend uh, Scream Queen, the Mark Patton, I don't want to say story, but it's, uh, it's on Shudder. It's a documentary about Mark Patton, who plays Jesse in this movie. So, what is this movie about? It is about a boy named Jesse who is fighting with Freddy from coming out of him. And that has been interpreted as being the uh, homosexualness coming out of Jesse. Because when he gets scared, he runs to his friend Grady's house. Grady is played by Robert Rustler. And Freddy takes him over at one point, and he ties up his P.E. teacher and whips him in the shower with towels. I wanted to get that stuff out of the way. There's a lot of nudity in this. A character gets pantsed. He wakes up and, like, grabs his crotch under his underwear. Something like that. It's really weird. Uh, and he has a very interesting dance, which we will get to. So, the background to this movie. First things first. The movie has Mark Patton. It has... Robert Rustler, who I think he was in uh, Amityville, uh, It's About Time. Uh, Clue Gallagher and his eyebrows. And, of course, Robert Englund is Freddy Krueger. The interesting part about Robert Englund is they almost didn't use him. In the uh, Never Sleep Again documentary, they said they tried to film with an extra who did not have the menace that Robert Englund does. So what they did is they brought Robert back and put him under the makeup. And that works. Robert Englund is a great Freddy Krueger. He actually makes an appearance as himself at the beginning as a bus driver. In that scene where he's a bus driver at the very beginning, he drives a bus off a cliff and in one of the more memorable scenes to me as a kid, this spire or whatever you want to call it shoots up and the bus is on here like this, tilting back and forth. The interesting part is the credits for this movie pop up before that scene happens. They pop up, like the title screen, I should say, not opening credits, but the title screen pops up, saying, A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, and like, slash marks. And then, in what looks like Terminator or Robocop block letters, Freddy's Revenge. As the bus is picking up somebody, and then takes off. What's weird to me, though, is the way it is shot, when the bus drives to the spire and it starts teetering, the way it is shot, it seems like the credit sequence should be after that. Because when Freddy gets up, uh, when you find out that Freddy's the bus driver, he takes his claw, lifts it up, where's it getting? Lifts it up, goes like this, and then slashes... You would think that it would cut to a black screen saying, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. 
But it doesn't. Instead, his claws like that cut to a mom cutting tomatoes. And to me, that just seemed out of place, almost like they needed to move the credits to the end of that first sequence. So, this is... There, there's some good and some bad with this movie. The good parts and the parts that I remember is I'm pretty sure at one point he says, I have the brains and you have the brawn, as he takes his claw, which is a negative I'll get to here in a second, dips it in his brain and picks it out and holds it on his hand in front of Jesse. Um, at one point, he, like, breaks through Jesse and crawls out, and he, like, he rips him open. You look in Freddy's mouth, and there, or you look in, I think it's Jesse's mouth, and there's an eyeball, like, in the back of the throat, which was very unnerving to me as a kid. Uh, when Freddy ripped through his body and came out, that was very unnerving to me as a kid. And the fire effect at the very end, not the pool party, but at the very end of the movie, uh, Freddy, Freddy's face melts. And that, that face melting has creeped me out ever since I was a kid. I know it's basically just like a candle, but honestly candles freak me out for a different reason, but just that works. What doesn't work for me anyway is the claws. Freddy comes out and instead of the glove, instead of the glove like right here, the knives are coming out of his fingers. Almost like Wolverine and that didn't work for me. The... and Freddy looked slightly off to me and also there's a pool party scene. Now part of it does work. I, I will admit that. When Freddy's about to make an appearance this grill catches fire, beer starts shooting out all over the place. That is kind of tense and a little scary. When Freddy appears and pops out, and most of the pool party goers are running away from this guy that they look like they can take. Granted, he has knives on his fingers and he, like, slashes a few people. Granted, they look like they can take him and they may not have been able to, and he did kill a few people, but he is smaller than most of those party goers. So, it's just a really odd scene, and I'm one of those people, Freddy should have never been brought into the real world. If you wanted to do this movie correctly, have Jesse wrestle with whether or not he's Freddy, make it a mystery, and cut out the pool party sequence entirely, and at the end you find out whether or not it was Jesse or Freddy. And... Once again, we end on a down note as when the bus drives off at the very end, Freddy's claw busts through a girl's shirt. So, again, Freddy's there, and they would go on to make many more sequels, but none of them with anybody from this movie. So, one of the other things I learned is that David Chaskin, he was the writer, he thought he was putting in a subtext because he thought what is scarier to a teenager than their sexuality, whether or not they're gay, straight, uh, bisexual, lesbian, what, what have you. And on one hand, he's correct. On the other hand, there, there's not subtext about it. There's an s &M bar, which they knew what they were doing. And no matter who's... If you watch the Never Sleep Again documentary, almost everybody claims that they had no idea that this was going on in this film. I don't think anybody's that naive, to be honest with you. I think they all knew. And so... So I do find that interesting. Again, if you want to find more out about uh, the David Chaskin and Mark Patton relationship, watch Scream Queen. It's called Scream Queen. My Nightmare on Elm Street is the full title. Uh, go watch that. It is on Shudder. And that will dig deeper into the relationship between Mark Patton... David Chaskin, the writer, and a, a few others. So, there is a scene that stuck out to me. It's the dance scene. There is a dance scene in it that Mark Patton uses his tush to close stuff. He has a little popper that he places between his, between his legs and he starts going like this with it and it pops at one point. It's just interesting. 
It is one of the most memorable things about this movie. And I don't have an issue with it. Honestly, uh, in the documentary, they make a comment about uh, Risky Business being an influence on this. And I could kind of see that. But it's fun. This movie, if you don't take it as a Nightmare on Elm Street movie, is fun. Oh, um, Jesse does use uh, Nancy's Diary as a guidebook. So, need to add that. Um, Jesse finds Nancy's diary, or I guess, I want to say Lisa. Uh, Lisa finds Jesse's, or finds Nancy's diary, and they start using that to figure out how to battle Freddy and where he is and all that. So, can't remember if I mentioned that. Kind of neat there. Uh, but other than that one link and Robert Englund being Freddy Krueger, there's, this isn't really a Nightmare on Elm Street film. Because there are a few nightmares, but it starts going into the real world and just not my type of thing. So, we have come to that time. Do I recommend this film? Sort of. I recommend everybody watch it once to see if it is right for you. So, it's not a film I revisit a lot. I don't actively hate it like some people do. And I don't actively go out of my way to watch it. But I do accept it for what it is. It's a, it's an interesting oddity in the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, shall we say. There's one more oddity in this franchise. Two if you count Freddy's Nightmares, but one more movie that's an oddity, I should say. So, I think that people should watch it once, see if it's right for them. If you like it, awesome, more power to you. Uh... Get the Blu-ray set if it's still available. Have at it. If you don't like it and you rent it on Vudu because video stores are becoming a thing of the past, then I'd say do that. I'd say rent it on Vudu, and if you don't like it, no skin off your nose. You just wasted like three dollars if you watch if it's not free because it might be free on Vudu. I don't know. So. That's my take on Freddy's Revenge. There is one funny story I wanted to share with y'all before I left. I went to see the remake of A Nightmare on Elm Street in my local theater. At one point, it was storming outside. The power went out. They let me have my Freddy claw. I stood up and I said, You're all my children now. Got a big laugh, got pulled aside, and told not to do it again by the staff. So, thought that was funny. So thank you for watching. Next time, it should be A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, unless there's an unboxing. I don't think there will be, but um, I don't think there will be as I have, as uh, last week, I just got Vincent's un, uh, Vinegar Syndrome's monthly unboxing, so I should be good on unboxings for a few weeks. So next time, it is A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, Dream Warriors, which is one of my favorites. Uh, if you go to my Patreon, the Thursday before the review, I will be reviewing Dawkins Dream Warriors music video. And that is for patrons to, of a dollar or more. So, thank you for watching. Remember, stay spooky, stay scary, take care, and I will see you next time.